Okay, we just talked about the average rate of change from one point to another, right? But people want to know all the time, what is my speed like at this instant? Not over this span of time, but right now, what is my speed? Let's try and talk about that. That has another name. That's called the instantaneous rate of change. And it's a little more complicated. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a lot more complicated. It's not too bad though. The instantaneous rate of change, okay? That would mean something like um, on this picture, if I went out to say three, you know, before we were doing from three to five, what's my average rate of change? Um, here I wanna say just right now at x equals three, what is the instantaneous rate of change right there? Um, you should wonder if that even makes any sense really. The way that we had talked about between three and five, you can say, okay, from this point to that point, it has a certain change, a certain slope. That's the average rate of change from three to five. But what are you going to do if I just give you one point? Well, that's the question, I guess. Here's what you do, though. This is a this is kind of a big idea that's not an obvious common sense idea, really, although it's not so complicated. It, hopefully, if I explain it, it'll make some sense. Here's your strategy. Well, you could go from three to five, then you would you would get sort of that line right and then you could find the slope of that line by doing the rise over the run all right that would be like going three to five but that line is not actually exactly the uh speed or the slope at three it's just uh it's i suppose kind of close maybe what uh you could also check the slope at four from three to four so you mark off this point and draw the straight line in there this will be a slightly different line you'll get a slightly different answer all right but I feel like it should be closer to the true instantaneous rate of change of three because you're taking a smaller uh, sort of interval of time here, all right? What do you do to make that even better? Well, I think you should keep on trying to sort of get closer and closer here and do the average rates of change each time. If you were to like zoom way in on this picture, here's, you know, x equals three here, right? And I imagine you could take this average which is something, all right? But then you could say, instead, look at this point and take this average. I'm trying to draw the same picture again, but maybe a little a little zoomed in, perhaps slightly more uh, legible, I don't know. Then you could try and take this, this point on the curve and take the average rate of change there. The thing is, um, as you choose the second point, you're gonna start with three, but you wanna choose the second point to be another point which is really close to three, like getting closer and closer to three, right? That should give you more accurate estimations of what the true rate of change right at the point of three is, right? If you think about the slopes, the lines here, what's going to happen is eventually this line that you're drawing should look like, if you're really able to do this um, many, many times, the final line that you get, here's my point at three, Get, make it so the second point is like so close to the three, you can't even see the difference between them. The line that you'll get then ends up being something like that. That is a straight line which meets the curve only at that one point, three. At least that's the only nearby point that it meets, all right? This is called the tangent line to the curve, okay? So if you do this process, you move the second point closer and closer to the first point, what you are eventually going to get is the slope of the tangent line to the curve okay so the instantaneous rate of change maybe i'll say that first as far as if you're wondering to yourself like what does it even mean to refer to the rate of change at an instant the instantaneous rate of change as far as like geometrically speaking on the graph um let me say at a point you choose a particular point x equal a you know in this case i was using three generally uh, let's just say the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point, x equal a, um, it is going to end up being the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point x equal a, right? That's what we decided. Eventually what you're gonna get, this was my point three, as you move that second point closer and closer to the three, eventually the line that you're going to be drawing, uh, whose slope is what you're talking about here, will be the tangent line to the um, to the original curve. All right, um, that may not be helpful in terms in terms of how do you actually figure out what that slope is. We we want a formula for this, right? But actually, this basic idea is not too hard to write a formula out of it. 
what you're going to do is you start with your uh, original point A, which was 3 in this case. And then you do the average rate of change of some really close by uh, other points. What do I mean by really close by? I mean something like this. So the average rate of change. Here's one way you could define it. Actually, we're going to use a slightly different definition. So don't, uh, don't go crazy with this definition just yet. But the um, instantaneous rate of change at x equal a is you do the average rate of change like this, right? But you're going to choose your second point to be extremely close to A, right? You could start it out here and then imagine you're sort of moving the second point closer and closer to A until they get like right up next to each other. And then you're going to end up with a picture like this. How do you do that? Make the B get really, really close to A? You do this. Limit as B approaches A, right? This is the uh, definition of the instantaneous rate of change at X equal A. That's how you do it. Now, uh, I just said this is actually not the way that we're going to typically use the uh, the formula if I ask you to find the instantaneous rate of change. There's another formula. Um, in some textbooks, this this is referred to as the, the, alternate, the alternate formula. I like this formula a little better than the other one, but here's the one we're going to use. You can put this one in the box. This is equivalent if instead of B, you call it A plus H, and you do some sort of canceling out, it's equivalent to this. The limit as h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. All right. If you go up here and you change the b to a, a plus h, it looks like that. That looks like that. And then down here, b minus a. If b is a plus h, it says a plus h minus a, which is h. All right. This is the formula. Put that in a box. Memorize it. Um, you're going to be using this all the time to find the instantaneous rate of change at x equal a. This one we're not going to use, although they're, they're equivalent. All right, let's try an example where we're actually going to compute the instantaneous rate of change. It's, it's a bit um, harder than finding the average rate of change where you just plug everything in and put in your calculator, that's all. Um, let's find the instantaneous rate of change. Let's do that same example that I just had before of um, f of x equal x squared at x equals 3. All right. Uh, remember, the average from 3 to 5 was 8. And if you're just doing x equal 3, I think it should be slightly lesser. Because if you drew the tangent line, remember what the picture looked like, right? Um, this was 8. I want the, just the tangent here at 3. This is slump, It's a uh, lesser slope. So I expect the answer to be perhaps slightly less than Let's see. Um, we're going to use the formula, all right? You just got to start here. Limit h goes to 0. f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And you just got to work this formula out. Eventually, you're going to take the limit, but you're going to have to simplify some stuff first. Um, first of all, what is the a? The a is the specific point that I'm talking about. In this case, it is 3. So let's plug that in first of all f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 over h. Okay. What about these f's? Let's sort of plug in for the function. You got to say, what is the function? Well, f of x is x squared. So f of 3 will be 3 squared, right? Uh, that's this over here, 3 squared. All right. The h down here is still the h. Okay. What about this part? f of 3 plus h. This is a deceptively uh, tricky step. Some people it's very common to screw this step up. What do you got to do for f of 3 plus h? f of x is x squared. What that means is whatever you're going to plug into f, you square it, right? So right here, I'm plugging in 3 plus h. What do you do? You square it. It's got to look like this. 3 plus h. Oh, I did it wrong. Come on, man. 3 plus h squared, right? Whatever's inside those parentheses, you square it. It's got to be like that. Make sure you have the parentheses right. Haters out there, beware. 3 plus h squared. Like that. Okay? This is not, it's different if you wrote 3 squared plus h. It's not right. Or anything else really. It's got to be like that. Okay? Now let's try and take the limit. But we're, we're going to have to simplify some stuff in here. How do you simplify that? Cast your memory back to when we were doing limits like this. Um, what we did in this situation was to do the foil right here. Expand that thing. So let's try that.
All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to expand this. That uh, 3 squared is 9, right? So you can do that. Limit. H goes to 0. Um, what do you got here? It's Just do this on the side if you want. This is going to be 3 plus H times a 3 plus H. So on the front, you get 9. In the, side, in the inside, you get H times 3. On the outside, you get 3 times H again. So that's plus 6H. And on the end, you get H squared, like so. All right? Now, from before, th that was just this part, remember, right? From before, I had minus 3 squared, which is 9, right? So that's minus 9 divided by H, okay? What can I do here? Can you cancel anything out here? Um, don't get too excited about, like, crossing out the H's, okay? You can't do that yet because of these 9's, but um, because the 9 doesn't have an H on it. But you can see, since they're subtracting, I got a 9 and a minus 9, so those guys actually cancel. So, that was a sidebar. This is lim h goes to 0, 6h plus h squared divided by h. All right, what can we do to take the limit here? Well, you can factor h out of the top. Limit h goes to 0. h gets factored out. What remains is 6 plus h over h. That was there before, all right? And now, having factored the h out of everything on the top, you can cancel it, and it becomes limit h goes to 0, the denominator went away completely, right? 6 plus h. Now you can really take the limit. Remember, once it's simplified enough, you can take the limit by just plugging in the h equals 0, and you get 6 plus 0, which is 6, all right? Remember I said I expected the answer to be slightly less than 8? Looks pretty good to me. That's how we do the instantaneous rate of change. It's a limit, right? It's not so bad, is it?